So, you've woken up with a diamond in your arm, naked on a beach, surrounded by dinosaurs, and you're not quite sure what to do yet. Chances are, you just started playing Ark Survival Evolved. What's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Oninoyama426 and today I'm going to be giving you basic knowledge about how the game works and what skills and tools you'll need to survive the Ark. First off, there are several arcs in the game storyline if you decided to purchase the DLCs, such as Scorched Earth, Aberration, and Extinction. There are also custom modded arcs that you have free access to as a proud owner of the base game, such as Ragnarok, The Center, and Valgaro. Each arc is vastly different and offers a wide variety of challenges and creatures to overcome, so be mindful of which one you start on. As far as the game's storyline goes, the island is the first arc, followed by Scorched Earth, and so on down the list. If you've just started the game, I recommend you start on the island, as it is difficult to start on other harder maps without knowing the basics of playing the game. As you begin the game, your first concern is going to be to find food and often to build a base where you can keep your valuables safe and craft items away from nosy players or wild dinos that may be nearby. But I'm here to tell you that your biggest first goal is getting experience levels to learn engrams to build better items. You can gain experience from harvesting items such as wood, berries, and metal, like this, and of course, wood, thatch, so on and so forth. You can gain experience from killing any creatures on the Ark. Note that the more dangerous something is, the more experience it will give you. However, just starting out, I doubt you'll want to take on something like a Rex. Gaining experience levels is extremely important because you simply can't progress in the game if you don't have the right tools to help you. For example, the first and weakest building material you learn how to make is thatch. While it's an okay temporary option, I highly recommend that you make your official base out of wood or stone. Because it's stronger and it's often more inconspicuous to other players. Unless you have, you know, this monster base that I have here. But it's okay, I'm not playing on an official server, this is my private one, so I don't have to worry about other players. When you've learned how to build with wood is when I would start looking for a base location other than the rinky-dink thatch hut you've probably built to store your first few items. As far as base locations, there are lots of good YouTube videos out there uh, that can do a much better job than I can on telling you where to go. But generally, I look for a location with minimal dinos around, and maybe a large wall, rock face, or canyon, just to make it a little easier to protect it and store your dinos in large pens, such as the one below me. For food when you start playing the game, generally your most stable source is berries from bushes. So by harvesting bushes, you get multiple types of berries, fiber, and occasionally seeds. There are six types of berries, and only four are really safe to eat. Ammer berries, tinted berries, azle berries, and major berries. That is the blue, the yellow, the red, and you can also get a purple. Let me see if I can get a major berry here. There we go. Major berries are the purple ones. Stim berries and narco berries are not okay to eat. Narco berries induce torpor on you, which will likely knock you out quickly at a low level and leave you vulnerable to dinos and players. Stim berries will increase your stamina but actually start depleting your food, so it won't help you survive immediately. So you've built a base, gained some levels, and survived off berries and drinking whatever you can find, as well as maybe cooking some meat that you may have gotten. Now we typically move on to the most integral part of the game, taming dinosaurs. To beat really anything in Ark, you have to have capable dinos by your side for some reason, whether it be protection, resource gathering, or boss fights. There are two main ways to tame 99% of the dinos you come across. There's the knockout method and the passive tame. Starting out, you'll probably see a lot of passive herbivores around and maybe some carnivores on the beaches of the island. Carnivores are important for protection from other dangerous dinos and for gathering meat and hide. For example, we got some dodos here. We just we got raw meat, hide, cake slices because they're having an event in Ark right now. Normally, you do not get cake slices from a dead dino. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, typically, a carnivore, such as the Giganotosaurus here, is tamed 
by the knockout method, meaning by inducing torpor to the creature, you will eventually knock it unconscious and be able to feed it the food of its choice to tame it and make it your own. To induce torpor from weakest to strongest method, you can punch, use a club, use a slingshot, use a trank arrow with a bow, use a trank arrow with a crossbow, use a trank dart with a long neck rifle, or use a shocking trank dart with a long neck rifle. You won't learn to craft trank darts until level 62, so I would stick with trank arrows for a while. A slingshot does work on smaller creatures as well as the club, but they're not very effective on the bigger and better dinos you really want to tame, such as this Giganotosaurus. I had to use shocking trank darts and a long neck rifle, and I sat there hitting this thing for about an hour to knock it out. All of these items, with the exception of the shocking trank dart, can be crafted at a smithy or in your inventory, so make sure you know what materials you need to craft your weapon and arrows, and where you can craft it before targeting a dino. Now, some dinos require passive tame, such as the small fat lizard known as the Lystrosaurus. This means you put its preferred food into your last inventory slot and feed it by hand to start to tame it. For the Lystrosaurus, this is a major berry. So I would go into my inventory, take the Medjaberry, put it in my last slot here, and if I hadn't already tamed this one, I would go up to it and press triangle to feed it to it. This is a much easier method with passive creatures, but much more dangerous with aggressive carnivores. Note that every dino in the game has only one way it can be tamed, either the knockout method or the passive tame. No dino can be tamed by both methods. Now that you know how to tame a dino, I would recommend looking up a video for top 5 or 10 beginner dinos in ARK to help you decide on which dinos you want to try to take on, and which ones will help you survive the most. For example, when you're beginning, a Therenzino is very, very difficult to knock out because they're very dangerous, but they can help you a lot in collecting resources such as berries, fiber, hide, and wood. And I mean, come on, look at that face. Who wouldn't want that? Please do note that you will die in this game at some point trying to tame a dinosaur, and that's okay. Look for the big green beam in the sky and you can find your way to your body and your stuff. However, if you died near a dangerous dino or a group of dinos, think about if the stuff on your body is that important to retrieve, or if you can just remake it. Sometimes it's just not worth the hassle. If you want to ride a dinosaur, whether it be for gathering resources, or just having fun killing things, you're probably going to need a smithy to craft most of the higher level saddles starting from a mammoth all the way up to a titanosaur. Some saddles can also be crafted in your inventory such as the parasaur saddle, the pteranodon saddle, the trike saddle, the raptor saddle, and other saddles. There are multiple that can be crafted in your inventory. So be sure you know where it can be crafted and what you need to craft the saddle. With all those experience levels you've gained, you'll want to start crafting more and more items to make your survival easier. This requires lots and lots of resources. I will start you out with how I collect some basic resources and where to find some more difficult ones. Wood, stone, and hide can be collected better with a hatchet if you don't have a dino to do so. Thatch, flint, and meat can be collected better with a pickaxe. Your powders and chemicals can be made in a mortar, or mortar and pestle or a chem bench such as this one. A mortar and pestle can be crafted in your inventory with 15 hide and 65 stone. You're definitely going to be starting with a mortar and pestle, not with a chem bench as it requires much, much more resources and better gathering methods than when you start out. Chitin can be found on bugs and trilobites on the island. You can also collect oil and some silica pearls from trilobites. Trilobites can be found on the shores or just in the water close to the beaches on the island. Metal and crystal are often found near each other at the top of mountains, however just starting out there are a few locations that are easier to reach. A really good starting location for metal and even some crystal is what's called Baby Metal Mountain here. It's located at the edge of these two forked rivers here. If we look on a map, you can see the blue arrow, that's where I am, and I'm pointing towards the mountain here. 
it's marked by this weird looking tree at the top. And if you head over there, you'll find big gold, metal ores, and some crystal by them. However, you won't see them on my server because I've mined most of them out. And now I have to go to mountains to get my resources. But you'll find a large amount there when you're starting out. Another good location is if you look at the bottom right of my map here, that's Herbivore Island. It's an island full of passive dinosaurs, so it's not really a danger to you. It's actually a good place to tame an Ankylosaurus, which I'm carrying right here to mine metal. And it also has some good metal ores there that you can just walk around and gather. If you plan on heading over to Ingvore Island, I suggest that you use either a raft or a decent flyer, because you have to watch out for things in the ocean, such as whales and sharks attacking your boat and even destroying it. So be careful when you're going over there. An often overlooked source of metal is these little smooth rocks in the beaches and in the rivers called river rocks. If you harvest one of these with a metal pig, you'll often get more metal than you would from a normal rock. This one's kind of a bad example. We only got two from that one. Let's try this one. Two, four, six, six pieces of metal from that one. So while you might only get one or two pieces from a normal rock, with a metal pick you'll get more from these. And if you have an Ankylosaurus, you'll average around 11 pieces of metal per stone, which is significantly more than normal rocks, so I recommend looking for these with an Ankylosaurus. If you intend on collecting large amounts of metal or flint, I recommend taming yourself an Ankylosaurus as they have a 75% weight reduction in metal. So 19 metal, which would normally weigh 19, weighs 2.9 on the Ankylosaurus, so you can collect much, much more with it. And we already have tons of flint from those few rocks. Uh, as well as that, Ankylosauruses are very easy to tame. They're just a knockout method, and you can just walk away from them while they're taming, they're so slow. So they're very, very easy. And their saddle, I don't think, is that high level. So, yeah, get yourself an Anki and go collect some metal for that higher level stuff. Please do note that it takes two raw metal in a refinery forge to make a single metal ingot. Oil can be found in trilobites or in wells that can be mined with a pickaxe at the bottom of the ocean, like this one that's just randomly on a rock here. Please note that if you uh, intend on venturing in the ocean for oil, be very careful as it is a very dangerous place, possibly the most dangerous location on the island. I've cleared out this area of predators before I came here, so there's no sharks or anything, but uh, most of the time there will be a vast majority of predators. Fiber can be collected by hand from plants, like this, you see I got 22 fiber there, or it can be collected with a metal sickle, which vastly increases the amount of fiber you collect, and sickles last a very long time. This is the second sickle I've made in this entire game, and it's not very far depleted, so the durability is very large. I highly recommend getting a sickle. So these are the basic materials that are required for most of your building and crafting an arc. Uh, you will, to industrialize your base, which you'll get about mid-level, you're going to require a lot more of these materials, but by then you should have a pretty well set up way how to do that. We'll go over one more thing before we quit, and that is your skills. So, as you level up, you'll have the ability to increase the stats of your character. Now, I highly, highly recommend increasing your weight, your stamina, and your fortitude first. Fortitude is the ability to uh, resist elements like heat, and cold so they don't damage you as much or affect you as much. Weight of course is your ability to carry more stuff which is a critical thing in this game and your stamina is the time that you're allowed to run or do strenuous activity before the game makes you stop and walk. This is mainly used to get away from predators or it can be used to run around traps when you're trying to tame a particularly difficult carnivore. 
all three of these are very important. The other attribute I start to level up later is oxygen, so I can dive in the water without scuba gear for a while when I'm in the ocean. Yeah, and sometimes movement speed, if you're just starting out, can be useful. If you're trying to get away from predators and you want a higher movement speed than they have, then you can get away from them. But typically this becomes less of an issue as you get bigger dinosaurs and better carnivores to protect you as you go along in the game. Remember, start small and work your way up. You don't need all these fancy big things I got right here when you're starting out. It will take time, it'll take effort, and you'll probably cry to yourself to sleep at some point. But that's besides the point. I hope you enjoyed my introduction to ARK and the Beginner's Guide. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time.